Hey folks, this is Mike Antile at Sailfish Solar. So one of the biggest questions we get is how much solar do I need? How much solar panel, how many solar panels do I need on the roof in order to offset my power bill? So in this video, we're going to dig into exactly how we size systems and what we look for when we are sizing systems and a couple rules of thumb that will kind of help you um, when you're trying to figure it out on your own at home uh, without having to go through the, uh, the whole estimation process. All right, let's dig in. All right, so when it comes to sizing your solar system, the single most important thing we need to do is figure out what is the consumption at the house or the business that we're trying to offset. Um, typically, the way we do that is we're going to ask for your power bills. The more accurate information we can get in the beginning, the more accurate um, we can build the system to make sure that it's matching exactly what your needs are. Um, so here's an example of just kind of a common power bill. Um, we're looking for these numbers right here, the kilowatt hours per month. Now a lot of times, you know, we'll only have one bill and so we are going to have to kind of extrapolate from there. Um, but with this, with our software, you know, we can basically take one month's worth of bills and we can uh, extrapolate what the rest of the year looks like. If we can get 12 months of bills, it certainly is going to be more accurate. Um, but for the most part, we can generalize from there. So in this example, this customer has 16,775 kilowatt hours of consumption per year. Now, depending on what you're trying to accomplish, a lot of times, sometimes we will go a little bit over, you know, that number, um, especially if there's a new electric vehicle coming or there's new uh, uh, anticipated loads that are going to be spent, you know, in the house. Um, and a lot of times, if all things are being equal, we're probably going to recommend that you be somewhere between 90 and about 95% offset. So in this scenario, we're going to try to get to 95% offset of the 16,775 kilowatt hours. Um, with the system that we've designed, um, we have a 10.935 kW system, uh, and it's going to produce our estimate is 15,900 kilowatt hours per year. And so the way that we figure that out, and essentially the software is doing it, um, you know, based on, on, on data, you know, that's publicly available data from NREL and the Department of Energy. Um, but for your simple math, you know, at home, if you want to try to calculate this, you would use a multiplier. So for south facing roofs and south, you know, kind of west facing roofs like this, we can usually use a pretty high multiplier, 1.5, maybe 1.4. And what that means is you take the system capacity size, so 10.935 kW and you multiply it times um, what we think the annual sunlight hours would be. Again, 1435 or 1450, 1500. Um, in this scenario, we have a multiplier of 1.45. So that's 1450 sunlight hours times the capacity of the system, 10.935, gives us that 15,900 kilowatt hours per year. So there are things that affect that, right? If we're on the north side of the house, the east side of the house, that number is going to change. That multiplier is actually going to go down, uh, you know, depending on where the system is. This is kind of an optimal rooftop, and you know, that's part of the reason we use this as this demonstration. But a northbound system, northbound panels, is going to be a much lower multiplier, probably down into the 1.1, maybe even one range. So a 10.9 kilowatt system could produce, you know, as little as 10.9 kilowatt or 10,900 kilowatt hours in a given year if these panels aren't facing kind of the right direction. Um, so as you can see here, you know, we, the, the consumption uh, changes throughout the course of the year and the production of the solar system is going to change throughout the course of the year. In the, in the spring months, it's very sunny out, it's very cool out. That's when your solar system is going to produce the highest. In the late end of the year, during the winter solstice in particular, your solar system is going to produce less. So it is normal for the production of the solar system to change throughout the course of the year. Um, uh, and it's normal, obviously, for your consumption at the house to change throughout the course of the year. These are when the air conditioner runs the highest, and this is oftentimes when the air conditioner is not being used, but you also might have your heater during this times of the year, and you might have your heater uh, during, um, you know, your pool heater during certain months of the year. Um, and then the other factor that could potentially be involved is shading. Now, obviously, we want to put the panels in a place that has no shade, but shade does happen sometimes, and that's not necessarily the end of the world, but it does mean that your solar system might produce a little bit less than this expected production um, if, in fact, there is shading on the panels. So for the most part, you know, that's what we would say is we want to offset as much as we can 
of the monthly consumption and match it as close as we can to about a 95% offset. Again, the reason we go to 95 is because you're going to have a minimum utility connection bill just for the luxury of being connected to the grid. Uh, and so you can't get around that. And so therefore, it doesn't make a lot of sense to go above about a 95% offset. So in a nutshell, that's how you would size a solar system. Simple math is um, you're going to say that uh, a multiplier, depending on where the system is facing where the panels are facing anywhere from about 1.2 up to about 1.5 um, another very simple rule of thumb is you can simply, if you want on a daily basis, how much you're going to produce on a daily basis is we just take this 10.9 kW and on average you multiply that by 4 and that's how many kilowatt hours you'll get in a given day. So this system on average should produce somewhere between about 38 and 40, uh, 45 or again simple math there, 44 kilowatt hours per day that's going to come from this solar system. So this is basic math but that's essentially how how we would size a solar system. Uh, we would caution you not to go too big, um, and sometimes there is logic into, uh, into undersizing a system as well. All right, well, that's it for now. By all means, call, email, comment below with questions. If you like this video, please give us a like, and uh, we'd be happy to bring you some more content in the future. All right, that's it. Thanks for stopping by.